then of course you've got the flat land. Right. But you can see out through here. Look what rolling. Yeah, look at that. The camera probably doesn't do it justice. Look at this old house here. See, wow. this is one of your old, older houses and yeah. barns. And see the barns. We've passed several uh -huh. down through here. Uh -huh. That the camera wasn't on. Some of the older houses, some of them look like they were built back during the Civil War, probably. for a, a different video uh -huh. something the Buckners is mine and Sheila's heroes Simon Buckner uh, the governor but not only that but his son and Sheila will tell you the history on him when we get here but his son Simon Buckner Jr. Right. was a hero and during World War II so these guys really like father like son. He took after his dad. And, that's pretty uh, cool. Yeah, that's a beautiful place. Isn't it? Yeah, I like seeing the rolling hills. Nobody's, nobody's, people's lost their faith. 
these so-called ministers, they're not like they once was. It's, um, they'll carry them Bibles around and act like they're, okay, she's looking at me. Yeah, you can't see it, guys, but yeah. <laughs> We're just going to enjoy the scenery. Okay. It looks yeah. old though, doesn't it's it? It's an old cabin. I don't know if you all can see it out there, guys. That's pretty cool though. That was pretty cool. Too bad they don't realize that the things that are old like that and they kind of um, fix them up, keep them. Sure. Church. Where 
scissor stab, what can you say? Uh, it's got it up there. 1970 looks like. So okay. it's not, it's not real old. Mm -hmm. It's pretty good though. Gotta make a lamp up here.
shift. Okay. Looks like a newer one. We're probably looking for the old one, but we'll let's go up here, turn left, and okay. see. Look for a Mumford. Uh, that's John Mumford. That must be the name of the guy. That turn right on Main Street. We're going to turn left. Wilm Clark and family. We're going to see if we can find a find a uh, Simon Buckner historical marker is what we're looking for. There's one uh, historical marker there, but I don't know what it is. I love the trees though. Boone, Wilm Boone, Hart County. Uh, we're looking for a Hart County. We're looking for a Simon Buckner. Do you want to pull? Yeah, um, yeah, we're going to park and then we'll we'll park. Okay. Because they've got them all around. There's a lot they have of a Mumford Welcome Center right there. A lot of history. We'll go to the Welcome Center there. Looks yeah, like. What's this right here? This guys, this is cool. That's what this says. This monument is dedicated to those who lived, loved, worked, and fought here during the American Civil War, and especially to those who died here far from home. May they find peace. Wow, look at this. This thing is split. Look at that. It's split. Usually it's supposed to be like that. Oh, I love these trees, guys. Look how pretty they look. Woo! Ooh, look at this. Just post that and they can read it on their own. Uh -huh. But down there at the bottom is Simon Buckner. That's the 30th governor of Kentucky. And that is also... Thomas Wood? He was a general during the Civil War. He's also the one that signed the warrant, or the uh, rewards for Devil Ants and the Hatfield Gang. Mm-hmm. What? I find him most notable and honorable for. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's cool. Let's see, I love this. And, uh, this is so cool. <laughs> that's the Lark County Courthouse there. Okay. What's that monument there in the middle of the... We'll go see. I'll be surprised if somebody don't yell at us. Get off the grass. <laughs> Who's in the Marines, they would. <laughs> yeah, that's what I think of every don't time walk I walk on the grass. And on the grass. Give me a sacrifices. War II. I would say without a doubt that Simon Buckner Jr. is probably on this monument if he don't have one of his own. That's cool. Bless their hearts. So a lot of people. Oh. Let's see it, do you? Oh, here's a Buckner, but it's Ray Hilm Ray Buckner. Ray Buckner, yeah. What about that? There is a Buckner. Well, I didn't see that. Is it right here, guys? Yeah. No doubt that's hmm. a relation because this is, yeah. where the, this is where the Buckners were from. Wow. 
Wow, look at this. No. Yeah, look at this bell over here. Here's a bell. Yeah. Look at the bell. Look at, that's cool. <laughs> Full of spring. I don't think we... of the Buckners. Simon Boulevard Buckner graduated from West Point, captain in the Mexican War, Confederate States Army General in the Civil War, Governor of Kentucky See was a uh, the Simon Buckner and uh, mm -hmm. this is a pretty little place. We still have a uh, couple of more spots to go, mm -hmm. but this is Simon the Honorable mm -hmm. Simon Boulevard Buckner. This is his home hometown <laughs> and. And his son, who's as much of a hero as he was, was the at least one of, if not the, mm -hmm. highest ranking military officer ever killed in combat, or at least in the Pacific during World War II, and uh, during the Battle of Okinawa. They were only a couple of days, a few days, of uh, taking over o Okinawa when he was actually killed. Sheila's got the history for you on that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Look at this, how pretty. Look at yeah. the tree. Yeah, that is pretty. Isn't it though? There's I City Hall it. beside the Welcome Center. Mm -hmm. We went into the Welcome Center, but they was uh, busy making a, a video of their own, they I believe. Live. Yeah, so we just uh, we wanted to get some information, but wrong time of day. Let's rush. Walk oh, quickly. Turn that off. We're continuing on at the courthouse, mm -hmm. and uh, Sheila's going to give you a little history on uh, where Some we're at doctor. today. Yeah. yeah. We're in Simon Buckner's hometown. Um, he was the 30th governor of Kentucky. Um, and he was the one that put out a 500. Okay. Thank him. Okay. Uh, he was the one that put out a $500 bounty on the Hatfield gang uh, to bring justice for Randall McCoy. Um, that was awesome of him to try to do that. He asked the West Virginia gov seventh governor 
to turn the Hatfield gang over to the Kentucky authorities. Um, Buckner Sr. also ran for Vice President of the United States in 1896, and um, which we've already done a story on him, and you can go back and look at our um, video that we did way back. Sure. Um, but today's story is also on his son. Okay. His son is just a, as amazing as uh, Mr. Buckner was. His son was General Simon Buckner Jr. He was the high, one of the highest ranking officers ever killed in action uh, while serving in Okinawa. Um, was in command of the 10th Army Regiment. Um, and he was killed when an enemy artillery shell hit near him hitting him with shrapnel in his chest, killing him instantly. He died on June the 18th, 1945, during the closing days of the war. Uh, World War II, I have trouble with that. And it says, Lieutenant Buckner was a highly respected general by the men as well as his superiors. Um, which was exhibited on uh, when on July the 19th, 1954, he was posthumous, yeah, I can't pronounce that one, promoted to full star general by special act of Congress. And during the war in Okinawa, there was 12,513 American uh, deaths, including wow. that of General Buckner. 12,513 wow. Americans died mm -hmm. during Okinawa. Uh, and uh, Mr. Buckner was born in Mumfordsville, Kentucky, is where we're at today. He was born July the 18th, 1886. He was only 58 years old. That's the um, age my dad was when he passed away, 58. Okay. Um, he, uh, his father was the uh, Kentucky governor from 1887 to 1891. Both father and son, uh, along with their wives, are buried in Frankfurt Cemetery, um, which we've already been there, like I said, and showed that. Sure. And it's just across from the Daniel Boone and Rebecca Boone's um, monument. Uh, and it's near the Capitol. You can see the Capitol from from their gravesite there. Uh, he had three stars ranked on collar. And That's when he was on the island of Okinawa. Okay. A Marine was uh, looking out with his binoculars and he could see uh, General Buckner's three stars. Oh, wow. He was a lieutenant, governor, uh, lieutenant uh, general at the time. Mm -hmm. And he could see the stars shining in the sunlight glycerin and he uh, radioed the command and told him that if he could see it the enemy could see it of mm. course high-ranking uh, officers was a, a a plus for any enemy to shoot uh, a high-ranking officer from the opposing force yeah. so he knew that would be a trophy to any of the Japanese there on Okinawa Island so the general took his hat off his helmet off with the three stars and put a, a regular uh, helmet on with no insignia, no rank on it. But they had already got his coordinates, his location, and that's when they filed the shell and fragmentations from the um, uh, shell that had hit him in the chest the and killed they, him. Uh -huh. Yeah, the shrapnel. Um, general had changed helmets. Uh, we have taken uh, you to these two uh, grave sites in mm -hmm. Frankfurt, of course, like Sheila says. And there's a video back through there, guys, that shows they're, uh, they're big. They're buried in these big uh, crypts or whatever they're called it's on top of the yeah. ground. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, it's really something to see. That's and really uh, cool. Yeah. And um, he was married to, I hope I'm pronouncing this right, Adele. They had three, had three children. children. Okay. Well, Sheila, do you have anything else? Uh, no, I think to... this is really cool, though, that Simon Buckner was from here. Uh, and then he was our governor uh, of Kentucky during the Hatfield-McCoy feud. And he tried to bring justice for Randall um, for the slaying and the murder of his, his family members. So...
He is our hero, ain't he, baby? He's, oh, that's awesome. He, He's from a beautiful place. Uh, the senior, senior Simon Buckner is our hero. Yeah. He, he's just one of the ones that stood up for Randall McCoy. Yeah. Back in the day when Randall couldn't get nothing, uh, not, nothing done. Nobody would go over into West Virginia. And I think a bird just crapped on my head. No, no, it's, it's a, those things, whatever okay. it is, because um, I seen one fall earlier. And, uh, buddy, thing. when Simon <laughs> Buckner took over in 1887 as the governor of Kentucky, in September, of, he took over January the 1st of 87, mm -hmm. and by September the 10th of 87 is when he signed the uh, uh, requisition to the, Kentucky, to the West Virginia governor, what Devil Lance turned over to them, mm -hmm. and he also put out the $500 reward. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Correct. Um, yeah. The Devil West Lance. Virginia governor at that time was the seventh governor, and it was uh, Wills, uh, Wilson. Correct. He was the seventh governor at that time. And he just refused to turn them over. And what he did after he got the requisition from Simon Buckner, he sent John B. Floyd to West Virginia to tell Devil Lance, instead of bringing them in and arresting them on the warrants, he told Devil Lance something's got to be done. They're wanting you mm -hmm. sent back over. Well, Devil Lance done something all right. He sent his boys and crazy Jim over and burnt the cabin down. And yeah. you all know the story on that. And in return for the, all of that, Devil Lance ended up naming one of his sons after the governor. Yeah, after Willis Wilson. Yes. Okay, guys, we are in Hart County, Mumfordville. The home of Simon Buckner, Kentucky's 30th governor. We just can't talk about it enough. It's a beautiful little community, beautiful little town, beautiful courthouse. They have historical markers completely everywhere on on uh, every corner. Yeah. At every tree, there's a little Confederate marker mm -hmm. there honoring those that died during the Civil War in the, the Battle of 1862. Looks like from here, September. One of Daniel Boone's sons uh, was here. They have a marker up for him. Sure. I think his name was William. What's this marker here? Did you see this? Um, William yeah, Lee Clark Mill. Sure, I think. Sure, Daniel Cobb. Oh, that must be a modern day something. Bill. Bill was deputy sheriff in Hart County from October 75 under Sheriff Daniel Cobb. And Bill became the youngest sheriff appointed wow. in the state of Kentucky to fill the late Sheriff Cobb's term. You know, that's interesting because at one time, well, I don't know if he was the youngest in Kentucky or not, but remember Perry Klein yeah. was the youngest sheriff ever elected to Pike County. That's exactly right. And, you know, speaking of that and how we always drift, because yep. the last Here time we, we done a, the last <laughs> time we done a video, we talked about it. And, but uh, Perry Klein, they were talking about uh, Perry Klein, how he was into it with uh, Devil Lance over timber and over, mm -hmm. over timber and business. Mm -hmm. And we, we tried to tell everybody. Perry Klein was never in timber in business. No, no. You know, Perry Klein was elected Pike County's youngest sheriff. He went on to become a jailer for two terms. Exactly. He went on to get his law degree and become a lawyer. Started the first um, black school. Then he went and become a state sent legislator. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. what? And when did he die, Sheila? Do you remember? He was forty-two years old. He was forty-two years, years old. I forty-two know that, years yeah. old. So. When he died, I should have asked you how old he was. I'm yeah. sorry. I know how old he was. Nah, I don't I, remember when he passed, yeah, but I, I don't can put neither. that on the screen so well, you all know. I don't neither, but I know he was 42 years old, yeah. so look at all the accomplishments Young. that that Perry Klein did by the time he was 42 years old, and they mm -hmm. say he had time to timber yep. and fight with Devil Ants over logging. Exactly. And yeah. keep the few going, evidently. Yeah. Not. Okay. That's incorrect. Sorry. Guys, we're <laughs> going to move out and head on to our next location. And Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share.